This is Texans TV. The best of the best on special teams in 2021. A closer look at a rising star in Jonathan Grenard. I definitely want to experience more. I want to do more for the team and put myself in the situation to excel. It's all now on Texans 360. We are ready to rock in his rock and roll. Hey, greatness today, man. And touchdown, Texans. I got fleets for all y'all. Ah! He's in rock and roll. That's when you think you've seen it all. There's always something else. Where would you rather be right now, man? Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, good night. Whenever you're watching this, we're happy that you're doing so because this is Texans 360. I'm Drew Doherty, your host, and we've got a fun show for you. We're focusing primarily on the youth of this Houston Texans ball club. We got a 53 on Jonathan Grenard, the defensive end, who led this team in sacks in 2021. Plus, we're checking out some of the best plays from Davis Mills' rookie campaign of 2021. And we've got some best ofs in the special teams unit. But we begin with some news of the week as the coaching changes continue to dominate the headlines for the Houston Texans. Plus, defensive lineman Roy Lopez is going to be a grand marshal at Mardi Gras Galveston in a few weeks. But we begin by taking a look back at some of the best moments from some interviews that I got to do this year with some players on the Houston Texans. Tell me about your hair. How long is your hair going to grow? Nah, it needs a cut. It needs a cut. I'm not judging. Um, I'm just wondering. I'm just right. Saying. I got you. No, yeah, it needs a cut. Um, but, you know, my uh, my Nana's the one that does my hair. Or uh, Originally, it was my Nana, my sister. She now does my hair. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much the thing. I haven't been able to have her out here for a game for a while. So she's the one that touches my hair. She don't want nobody else touching my hair. So <laughs> I, I let her have that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I started growing in my junior year of high school, had it long my whole college career. And uh, yeah, I, I don't plan to, to cut it anytime soon. Yeah. Do you remember your best Christmas gift you ever got? Oh, I got a little moped when I was probably like 12, wrecked it the same day. Ooh. Same day, literally, Christmas Day. But it was fun while it lasted. It lasted probably like two, three hours. <laughs> <laughs> it and was it was it like wrecked beyond repair? Or? Uh, it was. Well, it was just wrecked, and my mom was like, "All right, you're not, you don't need that again. You're not about to hurt yourself on this. I'm going down hills, hitting jumps, and everything." It was, you know, I was a little <laughs> adrenaline junkie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. But it's also International Tango Day. Do you know how to tango? No, but I will ask Roy Lopez when I get to work tomorrow. <laughs> He's a pretty good dancer, isn't he? Oh, dude, that dude's skilled. Yeah. Skilled. Does he do yeah. anything else besides the the kind of the, the salsa dance that he does after the sack? You see that in the locker room? He has a mean gritty. He's a mean gritty. Um, you know, and other than that, you know, he's he's good at dancing at to house music, tech now. So that's cool. How about you? You don't tango, but are you a good dancer otherwise? Um, I like to think so. I like to think I'm a quality dancer. Okay, what type of dancing do you do? I can do it all, man. So I'm not afraid. To, the only thing I don't know how to do is tango. It's pretty good. Uh, once I learned that, you know, that I, I'd be pretty, I think I consider myself pretty well rounded, well rounded. Yeah, the repertoire will be complete once you add in the tango. It's good to know. So it's going to be a 1 p.m. Eastern game. Yeah. When do you go to sleep? When do you wake up? Oh, I'm, I'm in bed by 9, 9.30. All right. As soon as the meeting's over, you know, I get a little snack and you head into the room. Epsom salt bath and probably eyes closed by 9.30. And it's easy to sleep the night before a game? Yeah, at this point, just being in that routine. Right. Yeah. yeah. Was it always that way? Uh, No, I think it's been that way more so because we had a newborn last year. <laughs> and so I'm, You're relishing you know, the I'm time relishing away. That yeah. time. I'm yeah. relishing that time because that's, I don't know if you have kids. Yes, I do. Uh, but if you do, you know, you understand that um, those sleepless nights early on are real. So uh, being able to get those moments uh, just to be able to have peace and quiet um, uh, that's why it's a lot more easier to sleep. Hotel room can be like a paradise <laughs> no in and of doubt. itself. No matter how it is, absolutely. When you wake up in the morning, what are you eating for breakfast? Something simple. I mean, pretty much like, no, nah, actually, it's not simple. Give me some hash browns, chocolate chip pancake, two pieces of bacon, two pieces of chicken sausage with blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries. Give me some orange juice, a suja juice, and a water. 
about oh and the coconut water shout out to sarah and Ladin to the whole nutrition what was the juice in between orange juice and water you're talking suja, about? Suja, suja is What's that how that? you say it the green oh. the little green juices okay yeah it has like celery cucumber lettuce yeah pretty good pretty healthy no nah, not really it's not just good for you and good you need for that. you right what's the last meal that you cooked um it was a filet with sweet potatoes and asparagus nice how'd you cook it I actually sous vide the steak and then uh, took it out and seared both sides and then the sweet potatoes chopped up pretty thin. Uh, my girlfriend actually helped okay. with the sides, but I mean it was a it was a dual effort. That's fancy, dude. I was just wondering, like, but, is this medium? Is it medium rare? You're going into all of this stuff. I mean, you're sous I don't even know what sous means. Like, <laughs> so you, it's like water cooking or. Yeah, I think water cooking. You put the steak in a airtight, air sealed bag, and uh -huh. then set it in water. And the sous vide will actually heat up the water to a specific temperature. And I set it to I think 131, which is right medium rare, uh -huh. in between medium rare and medium. And you let it cook in there for like an hour and a half. Let it sit. It'll cook completely through. And then you take it out and sear sides for the crust. And it's good. I learned stuff. Maybe I, you, maybe you guys watching and listening, maybe you already knew that. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm learning stuff all the time. All right. Last thing, what do you eat before a game? Like, um, say it's a noon game. What do you eat? Noon game. I like to eat. I'm. I love bacon and eggs before the before every, you know, when I wake up. Uh, but uh, a, my little secret weapon is uh, French toast with peanut butter and jelly on it. Ooh. No syrup or butter, just peanut butter and jelly. Kind of give you that proper. Um, energy long term for the game and, and and keep it rolling so there you have it kids p and b and j on a french toast and yep. you will become like danny amendola yeah. nfl receiver and you said one of the things you do to get ready is you watch the discovery tv show gold rush mm -hmm. why why i mean it's a cool show obviously <laughs> but that's that's one that you don't hear as much about as far as people watching but it's it's got something that makes you love it. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, um, just from being in, uh, I think we were at the Hilton or Marriott um, at Florida State, and the Discovery Channel was, you know, <laughs> it, it'll be on, and I'm just sitting in the hotel, nothing else to do, watch the film, go over your notes. You know, what else can you do? You're on lockdown. Right. So, uh, I mean, just watching this kid Parker um, and Tony Beats and all those guys, just you know, be very intense into what they do yep i mean just seeing the passion to it and then i mean just i like to watch people make money you yeah know? you know what i'm saying so like um i just fell in love with it and ever since then i just like i really like this show i really love it i've been watching parker since he was like 16. gold rush is a, is a discovery reality tv show uh -huh. about guys who are basically mining for gold correct. up in the yukon yeah. correct uh -huh. so this is Klondike. hard work yeah. Uh, yeah the klondike excuse me the klondikes uh -huh. yeah uh hard hard work manual uh -huh. labor but they're basically trying to find gold, right. you know, which is something we've been doing for millennia, time. you know, yeah. as humans. But this is uh, this is a job, the job you're describing. What, what would you be doing? What is it actually? For those I, that don't watch the show, I would. Me personally, I was, you got to start somewhere. But me, if I had to like to say I, what I want to do, Tony Beats has the best job because he has two dredges, million dollar dredges. And okay. He lets the family run them, his daughter and his son. Mm -hmm. And I love the wife, Minnie, because she's the boss. She's really the boss. Like, she's the one that runs the show. You know okay. what I'm saying? And Tony, he's so hard to everybody. He's hard to everybody, except for his wife and his daughter. Okay. His kids, too. You know what I'm saying? So, right. uh, me, personally, I would be in Tony. I'd be, I'd be the one just walking around, pointing the yeah. show. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's dangerous. I mean, uh, those guys work their tail off, but the boss is the one who pours out the gold and the weight right. and everything. So, I don't know. I'm that type of person. I'm an alpha male. Yeah. All right. Where does Tremont Smith's kickoff return for a score rank on the top five special teams plays of 2021? It's all next on Texans 360. Touchdown, Houston! Two games, two sacks for Big Roy. Touchdown, Houston! A TFL, it's third down. With the 
sack back at the 25-yard line. You asked for it, you got it. Third takeaway of the day, and that seals the deal. I don't know about you, but I've got Cool in the Gang on my brain right now. And if you don't know who Cool in the Gang is, kids, look it up. It's on Google or anywhere else, YouTube as well. But we're going to look up the five best special teams plays from the Houston Texans this year. And we begin with number five. Here's a punt by Johnston. Caught and drilled immediately. What a hit by A.J. Moore. Special teams bash. Here's Johnston trying to hang it high for Moore. And it bounces at the five. Texans trying to down it deep, and they do. At the one-yard line, what an excellent job by the special teamers. Here's Johnston getting the snap. End over end, angles to his left, and the Texans try to Hit. down it. And it touched the Titan. The Texans say they have it inside the five. They do! 61-yard field goal attempt for Kaimi Fairbairn. The snap is down. The kick is up. It's on the way. And he's got it! A career-best 61-yard field goal for Fairbairn as time expires in the first half. Raymond Smith, three yards deep in the end zone. Right lets it fly, and Smith is going to make the catch at the two. Right side over the five, cutting left, 10, 15, we're going to see him. 20, 25, 30, 35, still going, and he escapes out to the left side. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Houston, rock and roll. The future's bright for Jonathan Grenard. We're taking an in-depth look at the defensive end next on Texans 360. Coming at you from the Ford Studios, this is Texans 360, and quarterbacks had Jonathan Grenard coming at them quite a bit in 2021. He led the team in sacks, and he's hungry for more in 2022. This is a 53 on Jonathan Grenard. So it's a job now. You're going to have to find a way or they find somebody else. So I'm always looking over my shoulder just to make sure that I'm dialed in on my playbook. I'm dialed in on my technique. So that way, when I go out and put my foot on the field, that is my best step forward. <laughs> Repetition is everything. I mean, this game is all about just making sure you're doing these things day in and day out with the perfect technique every time. At the end of the day, everybody's fast and everybody's strong. It's about whose technique is going to hold up longer. So I try to hone in on those things a lot and put myself ahead of the game. I definitely want to experience more. I want to do more for the team and put myself in a situation to excel. And overall, I'm just excited to get back to work. This is the, the, the sanctuary. I'm going to uh, grab his, his leash real quick and we can take a little walk. Y'all can kind of see what I do a little bit before I get to the stadium, before I get my, my thoughts together, before I can get this machine running um, as far as going to practice. Because, I mean, it's a grind. I mean, it's meetings, you know, making sure you got workouts, making sure your body feels right, making sure you're eating right, sleeping right. So doing this with him just clears my mind and puts everything out in perspective and just Make sure I take care of him, and that way I can just get myself right. So when it's that time to make plays or whatever they need me to do, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go knock this out real quick. And we out. He knows what time it is. He needs about this every, every day at least, but sometimes he's like a lazy house dog. He don't feel like, he don't feel like taking a little stroll because he don't like his paws getting wet. So yeah, I take him around here a couple times, around the block and back. It just depends on how I want to do it, how much time I got. But yeah, he's a handful. I think I like him a lot too, just because we're kind of the same in some ways. You know, he can be real chill, but when he gets going, he gets going. So yeah, nothing too major. It's about one of these things that you got to knock out here and there. Go on. So, as knowing in this, this game, having that, this place to clear your mind, is uh, crucial. 
He leads the league in 24 years old or under players in the sack department. So good young player for this Texans team in his second year. Well, he is playing some super football the last couple of weeks. Really doing an outstanding job. Came into the game with 17 tackles, six sacks already for Jonathan Grenard. Every pass rusher and every defensive end has a sort of a different style. So the goal and the hope is to try to accentuate the things that you do well. John's a, a strong guy, he's a powerful player. He has good quickness, he has an understanding of leverage, and he's been able to use those uh, assets to his advantage. Jonathan Grenard with a sack! From year one to year two, or even going back to his time at both Louisville and Florida, he's kind of developed a little bit as a rusher. He worked really hard in the offseason, developed his body, developed his strength, developed his power, continued to work on his speed and his quickness. Bobby King and Allen have done a great job working with John on some different things. Let's get it, BK. Go, man. Come on. Stuff we worked on, you know, just the hand placement. He's a very instinctual player. You know, he can beat you a lot of ways. He's a great teammate. Trust it, baby. You trust me, trust you, we win to. Whatever the game plan is against a certain offensive lineman that week, he executes the plan very well. Hey, rush what you see, okay? Yeah. He's becoming a great leader and, um, you know, always, always, always stay hungry. So I have, like, my, my quotes here. This is, like, my one of my favorite ones. Just because overall, like, Mediocrity is so easy to get and achieve. It's just like one of those things that uh, I try to stay away from. I mean, it kind of keeps me grounded too because I just understand, you know, when you get into mediocrity, you feel like you're there. That's when you get passed up. So that's one of the things I hold near and dear to myself. Over here too is another one, just to remember your why. Um, that's just kind of self-explanatory. I mean, all my life, I mean, it's just me, my mom, my brother, my sister, um, my stepdad at the time, and my father obviously was passed, but Pretty much it's been us the whole time, so they're my why. They keep me going. Uh, my sister just had two beautiful kids, my niece and my nephew. So, I mean, it's, that's all I can ask for. I mean, I play ball, but at the end of the day, I do it for them just because, you know, the sacrifice they put in the game for me to get me to where I'm at, it just goes for everything hand in hand. So. Hey, what's the hard count? Left, 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 left. I would say he's very professional in his approach. Dealt with some adversity in training camp. He had the ankle injury, which limited his production. The way he handled himself in that situation, had the right attitude, had the right approach. And then when he had his opportunity, he's been able to take advantage of it. Those are qualities that you know, want all of our players to possess. And I'd say those are a couple examples of John, you know, where, where he showed that. So I wake up, as y'all seen, I kind of went through it with Tycho. I'm pretty much getting myself situated, brush the teeth, you know, wash my head, all that stuff. And then um, I, let, I, get, I take care of him because I know pretty much whether it's me or my girl who's here right now, she'll take care of him, but I just like to make sure he's settled before I get out of there. And then when I get up in here, as I'll see right now, the music is not playing. I don't hardly play any music at all in the mornings because I like to take that time to self-reflect. I just chill, keep my mind blank, and, uh, and I get set up for the week. Second down and seven at the 14-yard line. Here's the snap. And now he's going to go down. He's sacked by John Grenard, his seventh of the year. It's experience equals confidence. Every game he plays, he gathers more experience. And with that, confidence comes. You know, with that, his leadership, you know, stuff inside the room, and uh, the confidence has grown weekly. It's going to be a sack by Grenard. Grenard strip sack. I definitely um, came into the season. I just wanted to maximize what I did last year. I didn't have the year that I expected to have, obviously, because of injuries, you know. Me learning, adapting to the system, adapting to the NFL lifestyle. But this season, after that, I just made it my mind, I mean, made it my mission to make sure that I just try to dominate. I don't care what the stats say. I don't care what I try to do. I'll worry about that at the end of the game. But right then and there, I got to physically impose my will on my opponent. And I know that my teammates and my dudes on the D-line and the defense, the whole team as a whole, I know that we're on that same mission. I started playing ball when I was five years old. That joy of waking up on those Saturday mornings to get ready for my games, let's look at that same joy on Sunday. Because it's fun, I think a lot of times us players, we lose track of the sight of it. It's, it's, we're getting paid to play a child's game, but it's still football. And I think that's what I try to make sure that I do every time I you know, wake up in the morning and I step foot in that facility. But it's only great things to come. I'm, all, I'm just excited to see the development and progress that we make as a team, individually and um, overall. So I'm leaving on that. But y'all tune in with me, man. Stay tuned and stay tuned for the show. We're going to get this thing rolling up in Houston.
Davis Mills rookie season was kind of a tale of two halves. He started a bunch in the early going and then started after a break. And in that second part of the season, he showed quite a bit of promise. The rookie picked up quite a bit and is looking to improve upon all of that. So let's look back at some of the best plays from Davis Mills rookie campaign of 2021. Mills feeds Burkhead, Lee Flicker. Mills throwing downfield to his right. It's Chris Moore. He's in. Rock and roll. Touchdown, Houston. First and goal at the five. Mills under center. One back. Mills fakes the give. Looking, stepping up. Davis scrambling to the right side. Davis throwing back at the end zone. Wide open. Brevin Jordan. Touchdown, Houston. Here's the snap on second and 10. Mills looking, Mills firing downfield to the right and caught by Amendola. He's in, touchdown Houston. Three TD passes for Mills and the Texans strike back. Four man rush, Davis airing it out long down the right sideline, wants door set and door set with a great catch. Across the 45, he's down at the 47 yard line. What an effort. The Texans get out of the shadow of their goalpost with a big pass play to Dorsett. Mills throwing to the end zone. It's caught by Brevin Jordan. Touchdown, Houston. The rookie quarterback throws to the rookie tight end, and the Texans get another score. Mills fires to the right sideline, and caught by Chris Moore at the 40. 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Rock and roll. Touchdown, Houston. Mills under center. Hands off, and it's a flea flicker. Mills firing downfield to his right. Wants Conley, has him at the five. He's in. The Texans score on the flea flicker. Three touchdown passes for Davis Mills. Hey, if you thought, where's their senior bowl coverage? Well, we're just saving that up for next week, as well as HoustonTexans.com and the Texans mobile app. Just go there, because our very own John Harris was there all week long just exploding brain-wise with more info about these NFL draft hopefuls for 2022. Remember, the Houston Texans have nine picks overall, starting with the third overall pick in this draft. All right, for Tyler Marcotte, who put this thing together, for all of you for watching, my name's Drew Doherty. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time on Texans 360. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.